Growing up, our parents told us to drink lots of milk to build strong bones. However, the amount of vitamin D in milk doesn't come close to what we may actually need. So says Dr. Joanne Manson, Chief of Preventive Medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital. It's very difficult from foods alone to have adequate intake of vitamin D. The main sources of vitamin D are sunlight, ultraviolet light exposure, which causes the skin to synthesize vitamin D, and getting dietary intake through supplements or, or the diet. The necessary maintenance of skeletal mass is highly dependent upon vitamin D and calcium, and vitamin D is necessary for the intestinal absorption of calcium from the diet. Dr. Judy Glowacki is director of the Skeletal Biology Research Lab. She teamed up with Dr. Meryl LaBoff, director of the Skeletal Health and Osteoporosis Center, for a study on vitamin D and bone health. One out of two women and one out of four men age 50 and older will develop an osteoporotic fracture in their remaining lifetime. And we found that 90% of patients admitted to Brigham and Women's Hospital had low levels of vitamin D that were not healthy for their bones. The doctor's next research study will be to determine how much vitamin D we need to prevent fractures. What we don't know is what the optimal vitamin D replacement is for adults. We're hopeful that this will lead to new ways of preventing osteoporosis from even developing in younger people. Dr. Scott Weiss, director of the respiratory division at Channing Lab, has been studying the connection between vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy and children with asthma. We went on and did two birth cohort studies where we demonstrated that pregnant women who had lower intake of vitamin D were much more likely uh, uh, to have children who had asthma and allergies. We're going to enroll 760 pregnant women and randomize them to two uh, uh, groups, a treatment arm that's going to get 4,400 IU of vitamin D, and then uh, uh, just regular multivites in the control group. We believe that there's going to be a dramatic reduction in the wheezing rates in the first year of life, and this, that, that, that this will carry over to a reduction in uh, uh, asthma at age three to six. Finally, could vitamin D be the miracle drug that prevents many different diseases? It is tremendously exciting to think that something as simple as taking a vitamin D supplement could have these myriad benefits of reducing the risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, improved cognitive function, decreased depression. However, Dr. Manson says much more research still needs to be done. That's why a clinical trial to test its influence on these diseases, as well as possible side effects, is so important. There is a feeling that vitamin D may be more promising than many of the other vitamins and minerals that have been tested in isolation as single nutrients within a pill pill form. However, we still should be cautious before jumping on the vitamin D bandwagon.